Hello, my friends. Between God and Mary, who is more gentle, who is more patient, who loves us more, who is closer to us, who is more merciful? I ask these questions, perhaps a little silly, because some people still feel confused. You may have heard of some messages that say Jesus. Wants to punish human beings because of their sins, but Mary is holding back his hands. So it seems Mary is more merciful and patient than Jesus. Huh? Or at times we may have heard a comparison that God is like the father of a family, loving his children、uh, as a man, using harsh discipline. Or even sometimes physical punishments to educate them, while Mary is like the mother who loves her children in a womanly way or a motherly way, which is more gentle and patient,、uh, even at times begging the father to reduce his punishments. Well, this comparison may sound okay、yeah. to undiscerning ears. But it is not correct when based on the scripture and our faith. It is not right. Why? I had the opportunity to study at Marianum,、uh, the Pontifical Theological Faculty in Rome,、uh, with a specialization for Mariology. The topic we are discussing here was also treated there during my time. So we talked about that. Let me therefore share with you today a few points,、uh, very simple points.、Uh, hopefully, they are helpful to you.、Huh? First point: the book of Genesis writes, "Man was created in the image and likeness of God." It does not write, "God was created in the image and likeness of man." No. These two points are very different.、Huh? Therefore, sometimes when seeing good qualities of human parents, we may say they are like God. Sure, but we must be very, very, very careful to say God is like them, because in reality there are misunderstandings about God by this way of saying. For example. Uh, some people cannot come to God, or even reject God, when they hear God is like a father, because they were abused, beaten,、uh, abandoned by their own human father. So please, my friends, remember clearly that God is not a human father or mother.、Huh? The human parent is a creature. And is always limited in many things, including their love. When speaking about God as Father, we must understand the word Father in the way Jesus Himself means and teaches, not in the way we are familiar、uh, in our human context.、Huh? The Father of Jesus surpasses. All limits that a human parent has, both in power and in love. Psalm twenty-seven,、uh, verse ten, for example, or Isaiah chapter forty-nine,、uh, verse fifteen, writes, "Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me." God never ever. Abandons us, never. Second, Father Killian Healy, a prior general of、uh, the Carmelite Order, an expert in Mariology, states, "Nothing could be farther from the truth." In thinking that Mary is more gentle and merciful than God or Jesus. Why is this thinking seriously wrong, my friends? Well, the reason is very simple. 
Let's look at what Saint John uh, writes in his first letter, uh, chapter four, verse eight. God is love. God is love. God is love, while human beings, including Mary, only have love. To be and to have are very different. Is indicates the nature, the essence, while have points to what is received, something limited. God is the source of love that overflows endlessly. God shares His love with His creatures, including Mary. And you and me. All creatures are limited, so their love also has limit. Third, we have such a wonderful mother because God is so loving and understanding. God loves us and sees all our needs in the deepest sense. He knows we are humans. With bones and flesh, he knows we need visible means that are familiar in our human experience. Therefore, God Himself created Mary, a human being like us, to take care of us, to help us experience even more His great love for us. Many prayers of the Church express this truth. For example, in the morning prayer. For Saturday, week three, in the ordinary time, we pray. We are grateful to you, Father of Mercy, for you gave us Mary to be our mother and our model. To conclude, my friends, Mary is a wonderful gift of God. Of course, the giver of the gift is greater. Than the gift itself. We are fortunate. We are so blessed that God gives us this wonderful Mother Mary. Fourth, the topic of revelation. As we know, there are two kinds of revelation: public revelation and private revelation. Public revelation is universal. For all believers, and is found in the treasure of scriptures, in a holistic and total sense,、huh? meaning it includes the books of the Bible, the sacred tradition, and the magisterium.、Huh? Public revelation ended with the death of the last apostle, Saint John the Evangelist. The truth in public revelation is decisive, and already sufficient for our salvation. There's no need to add anything else. In the meantime, private revelation is limited, not obligatory for the faith, not binding, not decisive for salvation. And it must depend on public revelation for its truth and value. All revelations that happen after the death of Saint John the Apostle belong to private revelation, including the apparitions of Mary, of Jesus, and of the saints. Since private revelation depends on public revelation. It does not have the power to add any new truth to the deposit of faith. Sometimes it must be corrected or even removed when it contradicts the the truth of public revelation. Therefore, my friends, messages that give the impression that Mary is more merciful or patient than Jesus and God. Contradict the Christian faith, and they must be removed. As you know, even the Bible itself, which contains public revelation, 
needs to be read with good methodology, and some of its details need to be corrected to fit the divine truth, let alone、uh, private revelation. Huh? Besides, there is another note here regarding private revelation. That is, in reality, we cannot penetrate a visionary's mind to examine the origin of his or her messages. Therefore, when hearing someone claim that he or she received a revelation, we must be very careful in examining it with the truth of faith taught in public revelation. Of course. This work belongs to the responsibility and authority of the local bishop. First of all, fifth, the gentleness of Mary is an image, a reflection of the gentleness of Jesus. That is to say, his gentleness is the source for hers. Therefore, when contemplating her gentleness. We understand that his gentleness is much greater. Her intimacy points to the greater intimacy of God. Saint Augustine says, "God is even、uh, closer to us than we to ourselves." Huh? Uh, sixth, every person born into this world shares a common ultimate mission. Mary has lived this mission successfully. What mission? It is the mission that Jesus Himself fulfilled. Perhaps you already know the answer. The mission that Jesus carried out successfully is to manifest the ever gentle and merciful face of God. In other words, looking at Jesus and Mary. We see the most loving face of God, my friends. We have this same ultimate mission. So it turns out to be that Mary's gentleness is a model for us to imitate, in order to fulfill the mission of our human life. Let's thank her, my friends. One more thing before we end our reflection here. We can say for sure that Mary is very happy to contribute her part to making known the loving face of God to us. She loves showing us how much God loves her and how much God loves us. She calls herself His handmaid, His lowly servant. Let's listen once again to her words in the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for He has looked with favor on His lowly servant. My friends, her wonderfulness points to the much greater. Wonderfulness of God, her intimacy proves the most profound intimacy of God to us, and her love reflects the endless love of God for all.